Welcome back to Cord Cutters LI. If you use an Amazon Fire Stick, I am sure you are familiar with the dreaded term buffering. There's nothing worse than sitting down to watch your favorite movie or TV show and being faced with this. I also like to call it the circle of pain. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you several things that you can do to stop buffering forever so you never have to deal with this again. If you've been around Fire Sticks for a while, you may have seen one or two of these fixes I'm about to talk to you about. So for you, I've broken this video into clickable chapters so you can easily skip to one you haven't tried before. If you're new to the Amazon Fire Stick but have already felt the dreaded pain of buffering, I'd suggest watching this video through to the end. It could be that one of these things works for other people, but a different one will work for you. So with all that in mind, if you're ready to say goodbye to the circle of pain on your Amazon Fire Stick forever, grab your remotes and let's go. All right, let's get going here. So I will start with the simplest of all things to stop buffering on your Fire Stick, and that is simply to restart the Fire Stick. After some time of opening apps and closing apps over and over again, you will see that the Fire Stick in general will get sluggish, and that can definitely cause buffering. One way to restart the Fire Stick is go down to the gear and go down to My Fire TV and go down to Restart. But there is a quicker way, and that is just by holding in the play and select buttons on the remote at the same time for a few seconds, and then it will say your Fire Stick is powering off and it will restart. The next thing that you can do on your Fire Stick to help with buffering is to make sure that you're connected at the absolute fastest speed possible on the internet. So the way to find that out is go over to the gear again, go down to network and see the network that you're connected to. And then you can hit the play button and it will show you the status of your network. And built right into here is a speed test that you can run. See over there in the top right where it says uh, network download speed? You can click on that and it will run a speed test. And it will let you know if you're able to stream buffer free. So here it is right here. This is based on your latest speed test results. Your internet speed can support up to 1080p video streaming without interruptions. I'm connected to a 1080p device right now. If I was connected to a 4K device, it would probably tell me that it's able to support up to 4K without a problem as well. You could also go into advanced and check out some advanced features of the connection if you want to. It'll give you the IP address. It'll give you the uh, connection that you're on, your signal to strength ratio and so on, if, if you're one of the nerds in the family. The next thing you'll want to check on is to make sure that you have enough storage available to keep that buffer from running out. So what happens is a streaming app or whatever will download data like ahead of what you're watching to keep that little buffer available. And if you run out of that buffer, that's when you're going to see that circle of pain. So to check the storage, you want to make sure that you have at least a gigabyte of storage available. That's sort of the rule of thumb. You can go down to the gear and then go down to, you could go down to My Fire TV, but I like to go over to Applications and actually go down to, don't click on it yet, but look at Manage Installed Applications. Right here, you'll see the available storage that you have. So here I have 1.1 gigabytes. I'm in pretty good shape. I don't need, really need to worry. But if you did have well below one gigabyte, you go into Manage Installed Applications. And they have a new feature here where you can sort by the app size, which is kind of cool. So you can see which apps are using up the most space on your device. And if you don't use some of those apps, you can get rid of them. Let's say I canceled my Sling TV subscription. You can go ahead and get rid of that. You can click on that and then uninstall it and so on. So once again, the rule of thumb is you want about one gigabyte free on your Fire Stick. If you don't have that much free and you're really out of apps that you can uninstall, you may want to add storage. And I've made a number of videos that will show you just how to do that. I'll put some links in the description that will help you. The next thing to stop buffering, and this, this comes into play when you're using um, a lot of the third party uh, streaming apps or maybe unofficial streaming apps. And that is to use a RD account. I can't really say the words here. If you go to cordcuttersli.com forward slash RD, I'll explain some more about it. So if you're familiar with some of these apps that I'm talking about, you know how it works. You'll pick a movie or TV show you want to watch, and then you'll get a whole bunch of links on public servers that will allow you to watch that program. Well, what an inexpensive RD subscription does for you is it allows you to connect to premium servers that allow for much better links. 
So let me give you a quick demo. On the left and right, we're going to try to watch the same movie. But on the left, I don't have an RD account authorized on that app. On the right, I do. And take a look at the difference in the number of links that are available. It is pretty remarkable. As I said, can't go into great detail here on this, but feel free to check out cordcuttersli.com forward slash RD for more information. The next thing you can do to stop buffering on your Fire Stick is to reduce the number of apps that are running. Very often when you open up an app and you hit the home button and you go onto another app, that app still runs in the background. And to eliminate that, there are a couple of ways. There's an app that you can get in the Amazon App Store called Background Apps and Processes. If you open that up, it's gonna show you immediately how many apps are running in the background. I'm not using any of these apps right now, but they're all open and they're all waiting. Sometimes this list can grow up to you know, 10, 15, 20, or even 30 apps all running at the same time, reducing the horsepower of your Fire Stick and making it slow down, causing buffering. So right within this app, you can go over to where it says Close Multiple. You go across to where it says Select Remaining. And then you say, close selected apps. It's gonna bring you to those apps one by one and you can quickly just scroll down to where it says four stop, hit the back button, it'll bring you to the next one, four stop, go back, four stop, really quickly until those apps are all closed. This saves you a lot of clicks and you don't have to worry about anything. When you get to close all of them, it'll bring you back to the screen, letting you know that you have no apps running. And it's as simple as that. A little while ago, I did a video review on the TDUK App Killer. It's an excellent app that costs only $1.99 for life and it works on all of your devices. And if you wanna check that out, I'll put a link to that video in the description as well. Another thing you can do to reduce the buffering is to select a different server for your VPN to connect through. Let me show you what I'm talking about with IP Vanish. This is the VPN that I use and recommend. First, let's disconnect and then go down to the little pin to select the actual server that you wanna to go to. And this may take a little trial and error to find out the best uh, city to go to, but this is what I recommend. For me, for example, I found that the streams work best when I select Boston. So if I go into Boston, let me move myself out of the way here for a moment. Go down to where it says view servers. At the top, you'll see the server name and then ping. Ping is the time it takes for you to send a packet of information to that server and then get it back again. So you're gonna to wanna to pick a low number here. So if you quickly scroll up and down, you'll see that the low end of the numbers are somewhere around 16, 17 or so. And then on the right, you have load. This is the percentage of load or how many people are actually hitting that server uh, to connect to what they want. So that is also a number that you want to be as low as possible. So as you scroll down, you can see that these are in the low teens. So if we can get something with the ping time of 16, 17 and the load time of low teens, that's probably going to be a good server. Here we have Boston A12, 16 milliseconds, 12%. That's probably a very good fast server. Let's click on that and it's going to connect us. Move myself back over here. If you still find some buffering after connecting to that server, try another one. Usually when you pick a good server that works, you can usually stick with it for you know a number of days or weeks before you'd have to go in and take a look at changing that. The last thing really isn't a fix for your device, but it might be time to upgrade. If you have an Amazon 4K or even something older, or a better way to say it, if you don't have the Amazon Fire TV 4K Max or the Amazon Fire TV Cube third generation with Fire OS version 7, you're missing out. These two models are way better than any of the previous versions they ever had. Believe me when I tell you, you're not going to be disappointed if you buy one of these new devices. It's easier to add storage if you need to, and it's a lot more responsive. So there you go. A bunch of ways that you can fix buffering on your Fire Stick forever. Give some of these things a try and let me know in the comments below how you made out. If you learned anything in today's video, please go ahead and click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and as always, share this and all of your favorite Cord Cutters Ally videos with your friends. This helps to get my videos shown to more people on YouTube and helps to support the channel. Thanks for watching.